Now let's have a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. We thank you for this session we are going to have. We pray that all what we are going to have in this session be a success. And for our colleagues who are still struggling to join us, uh, help them to join us early before this session gets into the middle or the end. We've prayed, believing in your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As I introduced myself earlier, I am Stephanas Galinia. I work with Uganda Christian University Library. I'm a librarian by profession. Uh, and I'm located at the main campus here in Mukono, in Ham Mukasa Library. As the library, we, at the main campus, we have two libraries. The Ham Mukasa Library, which uh, houses almost 95% of all the print materials for the rest of the programs, apart from uh, the Bishop Tuck Library, which is hosting materials on divinity and theology alone. So I'll be grateful in the near future if we could meet. Uh, Bonnie is saying he met me. Okay, uh, thank you, Bonnie. And since we've ever met. So today's session, it's basically on how you can be able to access the library online, wherever you are. Because I understand very well you are having your classes uh, virtually. So as the library, we also have to engage you in so that you get used how you can be able to access the materials electronically. So allow me to share my screen, uh, which we are going to interact with. Maybe before I share it, uh, let me uh, switch on my video. So for those who have never seen me before, uh, you can be able to note note it that it's not a robot communicating to you it's a physical human being uh well, let me share my screen okay right so this is our library page is library.ucu.sc.ug and that's the page where we're going to start from I was talking to Docas, the admin assistant to your faculty, to your school of business, and she was telling me that 90% uh, of you, you have now the login credentials for the e-learning platform as well as the alpha platform. So that is very great because we are going to use those credentials to create an account. And before I move any further, uh, I volunteer right now can just go into the chat and you paste in the following um i need i'm requesting for your access number a volunteer that volunteer should you share with us your access number uh you may share with me privately because you're also going to share the password share with me your access number your password you use on the Moodle platform or the alpha platform and then your true names you use i think that's what i need yeah that's what i need i need your access number your password you use on the e-learning platform on the alpha platform and then your access number and your true names are those are enough because we are going to first i'm going to first run a demonstration on how you can create an account with us as the library so on this page, all you are able to view, on the main menu, from the home, we have the library catalog, we have electronic resources, we have online library, we have UC digital repository, we have research, and also request for training. So request for training, it's the one we are conducting right now, but this time round, it's the administrative assistant who booked it for you. So in the near future, if you need a training, you just go there on that link, and then you fill the form accordingly, according to the required information we need from our end, then we shall train you, because we even train individuals. It's not that if we only train uh, classes. So when we come here, we shall start with the catalog. 
Most of our work today is going to be uh, uh, settled on online library, but let me start with these first links because they are also very important. And we have uh, an, uh, a brief navigation on how they work. So I'll start with the library catalog. So as it loads, the library catalog, it will basically assist you to get to know the physical materials we have on the shelves in the library. So when you come to this page, as it displays, we have a, a search box. And then, for example, if I was looking for material on business management, I'll just type in, uh, I'm assuming, I'm not so sure of the title of the book. So I'll just type in business management as my search term. And then I'll just enter the key, the place that I enter key on my keyboard. For it to allocate whether there is anything on business management in print with UCU libraries. So this uh, platform, the catalog, it runs across all our campus libraries, including Mbale, Arua, uh, Kabale, Kampala campus, and even here. We share the whole information. Uh, you'll appreciate this, that uh, when you look at the first book, it's Harvard Business Review on Management, stroke Harvard Business Review. So that first book, uh, it's, in, it's located in Hamukasa library, and it is one copy. There's what we call a call number. So this call number, it's not a phone number. It's, an, it's a, a scientific number which we use to allocate subjects for the books. So the call number, when you visit the library physically and you share the call number with the, one of our staff on the saturation desks, he or she will be in position to allocate for you the book. So because the first book is in Hamukasa Library, it's one copy. When you look at the second book, it's only indicating business because what the catalog does, it searches for the keywords you submitted. So when you look at the second book, it's an introduction to information systems, supporting and transforming business. Now for this particular book, we have three copies, but they are by the campus library. That means if you are that end, you'll be able to access them when you visit in Bale Campus Library, and there are 30 copies available. So the same applies to the rest of the books. Then we have materials which are called reference materials, like dictionaries. Now the dictionaries, we don't lend them out. You are only supposed to use it within the library. So uh, for those ones, uh, it has to be clear to you. Uh, dictionaries, encyclopedias, almanacs, pythauruses, yeah, books, those ones don't get out of the library, the ones we have in print. So that's how the catalog will be of assistance to you. So it just allocates, uh, it, it helps you to know whether the book is available. So if it is borrowed, it will indicate that checked out. Uh, if it is in, if it indicates, for example, in near future, you'll find that it will indicate uh, in transit. Transit in most cases means the book is on purchase or uh, it's in the binary, uh, it got some to, uh, worn out pages and they are trying to uh, put it in the good state so that it can be borrowed out by a client. So uh, the catalog, it's for print, so you won't be able to get an electronic material here. So when we move back to our homepage, we have electronic resources. Uh, this one, I don't want to zero so much on it, because whatever it has here, we can be able to access it from elsewhere. Then uh, when you come to online library, let me first skip it, because most of our time is going to spend, be spent here. I'll go to what we call the UCU Digital Repository. Now the UCU Digital Repository, it's an open source database which was uh, developed by the library uh, in a, with, with assistance from our ICT department that uh, the institution repository, it houses a number of materials, including books, including book chapters. Uh, the page you are able to view right now, it has what we call communities of UCU Digital Institution Repository or UCU DIR. So we have what we call the African Policy Center. Uh, they have some papers they've published, seven of them. Then we have books and book chapters, 27 of them from your lecturers mostly. 
Then conference articles, proceedings, working papers, and technical papers, they are 72. Most are coming from your lecturers as well. Then there was a project some time back of the Department of Languages. They were working on story, uh, story books and translating them in local languages. So we have around 257 of them. Then public lectures, these are normally uh, conducted towards our main graduation, which is always in October. Apart from that, the pandemic, we had one in November, normally in October. So those public speeches, they are also there, public lecture and speeches. Then research papers and publications, these come from your lecturers still. So they are also published here. And then uh, on the right hand side of the page, they've listed a number of uh, authors and these are lecturers and it lists the most high. So for example, Matovu Joseph KB has 48 items here. Birunji Josephine has 45 of them. So if you want to search for your lecturer, you just search here by name. It will display for you how many materials he or she has published with us. Then uh, as you graduate, you'll be required to submit an electronic version of your dissertation. So we have thesis and dissertation uh, for both uh, some few students, but mostly at the moment we have those for, from staff who have studied from UCU and maybe abroad or, or in other universities outside of UCU. So the dissertations, you'll be required to submit them, but uh, you'll be submitting to the, to the library and then the library will be publishing them on this platform. So you can take your time and navigate through. There are so many important materials here which you can use for your class or even for your, uh, for your research. Um, many materials are, are also here on the repository. So then let's go to the online library. So the online library, it takes us a page which has a URL which reads ucueelibrary.remotex.co slash user slash login. Now this page, when you reach at it, uh, it will display to you uh, on the right hand side that you have to log in your email address and then your password for you to access it. But since many of us, we don't have accounts with it, we are going to go to this link which says register here. And the moment I move the cursor to it, it reads create a new user account. So I'll click on that. Uh, just a minute, let me see. I think somebody has submitted the details. I... Maybe just one step back from, I didn't see exactly where you created the, I've link. not yet created, I've not yet created anything. I've not yet created anything yet. So we're just going to go to create an account. So maybe for those who have just joined, when 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 you reach at the main page of the library, which is library.uc.ac.ug, go to the online library. So that's the link which takes us to uh, to the account of this nature. So no matter when this place, when you click on online library, it will take you to a page of this nature where you have to click on register here on the right hand side of the page. You have to click on register here. So that's why I'm clicking and it's displaying a template of this nature and we have to feed in the information. So uh, let me check in the chat and see whether there's a volunteer who submitted uh, what we are going to use. Just a minute, I need to copy this info, then we start off. Okay, we are going to use the details from Bonne. Bonne has shared. I hope you are hope you are all able to hear me because uh, I've seen Simon and Solomon. They are saying my volume is low. I don't know whether it's now clear or it is still low. You are loud and clear, Mr. Stephens. Oh, okay. I'm getting you. Okay, thank you so much. 
So now we are going to feed in the details. And the, normally he has shared his access number, so it will be access number at students, because normally that email has at students.ucu.ac.ug. And then I'll go to the password. So the password compliance, it must have at least a minimum of eight characters. And this must include a symbol, a letter, a digit, upper and lower case. So uh, what Bon has shared with me correctly matches with what is required. So I'll just place in the password. And then I have Excuse to me, sir. the password as well. Excuse me, sir. Uh, just a minute, let me finish this. Okay. Okay, then after, yes, your excuses on, yes. It yeah, 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 on, on password, uh, does it have to, to be the one I use for, for logging on through the Moodle or, or the alpha, or it's a different password for this particular account? You can use the same for Moodle or alpha because the systems require the same, the same nature of password. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so after placing in the password, if the password was not compliant in the first place, it wouldn't be seven of seven. And then after confirming it uh, to be compliant, it says password matches, it, will, it says yes. If it wasn't, it would say no. Then I have to go to the names and type in his names. And then the last name, And then I'll continue to the access number. Since he has already shared with me the access number, I'll just place it in here. And then there is what we call the user categories. So when you go to user categories, there is what we call select a value. There's a drop down icon. I'll click on it. And then I'll scroll down. Uh, since you are all postgraduates, you'll select postgraduate business administration. So be very careful when you are selecting because we have a number of them. We have academic, we have postgraduates, we have undergraduates. But of course, for us, when we are approving the account, we first cross check. So after that, I'll go to the terms and conditions, agree. And then I'll go to the code. Now this code keeps on changing. So it doesn't mean that the one which you are able to view right now on my screen, it will be the one you view. It keeps on changing. So after typing it in, I'll go to the blue button, which says create new account. But before clicking on it, I need to first cross check whether all the information uh, I've put it in or I've inserted it in as required. Then if it is okay, uh, sometimes this code disturbs a lot. Sometimes it's complicated. So you also have to first look at every letter or every digit and you confirm that everything is fine, then you click on the blue button, create new account. So we've created an account and that is done. So after creating the account, then you cannot log in right now. Uh, Mark cannot log in right now because the account has to be approved from our end. So what I'm going to do is log in my account so that I can approve because I have the administrative rights. I think I made a mistake. Uh, I placed Bonnie under academic staff, so I have to edit. I think when I was trying to justify for you, by default, I selected academic staff. Okay. 
One is a positive grad. I'm seeing uh, Victor, okay, we approve Victor. Okay, the rest of the undergraduates are approve them later. So I don't want to waste a lot of time, approve accounts. So after that approval, I'm going to log out. We are going to use the Bonnie's account, not mine. So I'm going to log in uh, the details for Bonnie. Okay, so this is the page which we are all supposed to view. So when you reach at this page, so all of us when we create our accounts, apart from Victor whom I've approved, the rest after creating an account, if you are creating it within this session, I'll approve after the session. So don't bother to log in. It will, it will give you a message of not activated or blocked. So don't log in apart from Victor. So when you reach at this page, we have a number of materials. For example, we have the ebooks, electronic books. We start with ProQuest, ebook central, and then also the list is organized alphabetically. Then we have what we call free and open access materials. Those are the ones which the investor doesn't pay for, but we have access for them. And among these, I'm seeing here World Bank e-library, which might be of importance to you. Then when you continue down here, we have the subscribed journals. Those are the ones the university subscribes to or pays for annually. They are still organized alphabetically. And the, all these cut across the programs which the university uh, offers, including our colleagues who are in the medical school and dentistry. So what we are going to do, we are going to select what we call our favorite databases. When you look at this page, uh, on the on the right hand side we have my favorites. So under my favorites, currently there is nothing. So we are going to select these databases by clicking in the star icon for each database. So me pointing there, it indicates add this post to your favorite. So whatever I'm doing on a computer, if you have a laptop or a tablet or a good smartphone, you will be able to do everything whatever I'm doing now on your phone. So I'll click, I'll select ProQuest. So after selecting it, the, the icon turns blue uh, instead of uh, a light color. Well, and then after selecting that, I can also select World Bank e-library. Then when you come to these other databases, I'm going to select uh, Cambridge, Brother Ebsco host, and then I also select Emerald, then I also select Cambridge Core. Then I'll continue and select JSTOR or journal storage, in brackets journal storage. Uh, since the list is organized alphabetically, I'll continue down and select Taylor and Francis online journals. So after selecting those databases, in the case in the near future, your research is going to be on uh, business management or administration with the Church of Uganda, you can take the archives because the archives, they house information since 1877 when the church missionaries came to Uganda. Uh, so it has information from 1877 up to 2010, including all the dioceses we have in the Church of Uganda, the province of the Church of Uganda. And then some materials for UCU, because as well, you know, this institution started in 1997 and next year, we are glad by God's grace, we shall be making 25 years of age. Amen. So, so uh, Church of Uganda Archives, they also have the, the background information or the historical information of the university from 1997 up to 2010. 
So uh, after selecting the favorites, you may ask yourself why is that they are not displayed here? Yes, they are not. We have to first refresh the page. So I'll refresh the page. So after refreshing the page, you can all be able to view now my favorites are here. So if I was using a smartphone, my favorite list will be at the extreme bottom of the page after all the lists, after even the electronic databases. That's where it will be because a phone has a narrow screen. So it can't display like a computer. So then uh, after selecting my favorite databases, I'll, I'll briefly look at key books, but I want to concentrate so much on journals. Since you are postgrad, uh, I understand for you do a lot of research uh, because for undergraduates you would only look at ebook central. But for your case, we have also to visit the journals. They are very important because first of all, you will appreciate at the end that they have even materials published last week. So we shall start with the ebook central, which we are not going to spend a lot of time on it. Then we shall concentrate mostly on the rest of the databases which are journal based. So when you go to ProQuest, which is an ebook database, uh, ProQuest, you need to create an account. So most of the ebook databases we have, you should have an account. So besides the other main account you created for us to be able to access all these databases, you have to create an account here. And for this, I will not request for, I will not run a demo because it's very simple. The template is very simple. So, but when you reach at the home page, we have what we call a search box for basic search. We have what we call browsing. So we shall browse, and then we also have what we call advanced search. So there are three elements for these databases for you to navigate them, either by search, basic search, or advanced search, or browsing by subject. So let me first take you to sign in. When you click on sign in, going to give us two options for those who don't have accounts to create one so there is where to sign in and then there is also where to create an account so when you click on create account to display a small page which has where to feed in your first name your last name your email address your password but don't forget to tick in the box for privacy policy and terms of service. So you have to agree and then you create an account. Only that for their password, it has to be a minimum of eight characters. So you create an account and that is done. You do it once, it has no approval, the approval is done there straight away. So I'll sign in so that we can navigate through. So when you when you sign in, first of all, it was saying sign in. Now it says sign out. It will not display your names, but only the sign in and sign out icon are the ones which will keep on changing. So when you reach here, let's start with browsing. So most of these databases, the way they were organized, when you come to browsing, some of them they have what we call disciplines, and under disciplines you find they are subjects. So when you go to business, there is business, stock management, and then economics. So if I'm looking for information on business, books on business, because this is an ebook database, uh, the reason why I've opened it in a new tab is because I may be interested more in the rest of the materials here. So even economics, let me open it. So it says under business, stock management, it has 27,105 book results. So those are the number of materials they have. Then when you go to ProQuest, rather to, uh, to, to economics, they have 14,539 materials. So then among these books, on the right hand side, there's what we call, rather on the left hand side of the page, there's what we call refine, ref, refine your search. So refining your search will help you 
to break down this number to a reasonable number of titles you can run through. For example, book status. There is owned and subscribed to by my library. So you click in the box. So the numbers will change. So if you untick, it will go back to the main numbers. So it means that with these numbers, all of them, we have access to them. So I'll tick in owned and subscribed by my library. Then since all of them, I have access to them, I'll click on unlimited print, copy and download. So you can see the numbers have, have dropped down. So the books which I can print, which I can copy and download, there are 3,880. Yet previously, it was 14,000 plus. Then as you continue down here, year of publication. 2021, there is one book. 2020, there are nine books. So if you are looking for books, maybe for 2019, and you click in 2019, it will display only the 39. But you have to bear in mind, uh, as you keep on changing and refining your search, you might miss out maybe some materials. So you need to first find out uh, whether when you change, you will still remain with access to the materials. Then when it comes to subject, however much this is economics, I may be looking at economics under political science or under business and economics, stroke international and economics, or you can click on show more, it will display more subjects. Then there is language. 90% they are in English, but you may be interested in French books. In case, for example, if you have colleagues from uh, Rwanda or Burundi or Congo who know how to speak French, you may be interested in those. Those are only 39. Then there, there are also authors. In case you are sure that you want only publication is from World Bank, because we have what we call individual authors and ones we call corporate authors. Corporate authors are the authors who publish uh, who write books as companies. For example, you see when it publishes, it's a corporate author. So I may be interested in World Bank materials only. I'll click in the box and only 180 materials will be displayed. So that's how you, you limit down your numbers. Then when you look at these books, I, there may be no title I'm interested in. But let me go and search for a book on supply chain. Uh, supply chain and management. Okay. It's mostly used by undergraduates. I don't know whether that even at masters it's uh, you use it most. So for example, the, uh, the, when I type in supply chain and management, so they are giving me sustainable supply chain management, yeah, global supply chain. Uh, so there are a number of them here. Then there is a strategic supply chain management. Okay. Uh, if I, if I, uh, let me first check the catalog because, okay, did I close it? Let me check the, the, the catalog and I get the author I need. Supply chain management. Seems I'm not getting what I want there, but we can continue. So when I search, my page, okay. When I get these books, for example, there is exploring supply chain management in creative industries. Uh, we have a number of icons here. There is one for full download. There is one for read online, then table of content and more, and then add to bookshelf. So adding to bookshelf is not adding it to an offline bookshelf. This is adding the book on 
an online bookshop. Now that bookshop is within your account. That's why for you to navigate through ProQuest eBook Central, you need to have an account. So if I click on add to bookshop, so this book will be added to my bookshop. But before it's added there, by default, they display a folder called research. So I can create a new folder or I can use the existing folders. I have a number of folders here, but they are basically for training purposes. So I'll select business administration and then I'll add it there. So after adding it there, the icon has changed to a tick, not a plus sign. And it says saved to bookshop, meaning that it's already there. So if I want to download this book, and maybe I'm still interested in this long list here, I'll right hand click and open it in a new tab. So when I open it in a new tab, now it will display its details. Now this book, I can only be able to download 31 pages. But when I check on show more on its uh, book details, it's a page of 77 pages, but they are only telling me I can be able to download the 31 pages in PDF. Now, these restrictions is they are not set by ebook central. They are set by the author. So the author wants to remain on the market. So he cannot give you the full book free of charge like that, that you get it as a PDF. That's why there are such restrictions from the author's side. And they have a right because they own the materials. So what, but there are also an option of downloading it all for 20, maximum 21 days. So if you are downloading a chapter, and remember they are giving you 31 pages, each chapter they've given it a number of pages. So as you download a PDF, for example, let me download the first one. So as you download, it will keep on counting. It will let you know because you are using your account. So when it finishes, then it will display. So it will keep on counting. When you look at my book here now, it's now indicating 22 pages remaining for PDF. So there is a way they built the system that it can easily uh, monitor. But if I need it for 21 days or 14 days or seven or one day, and I need a full book, I'll go to download book. So when you go to download the book, if I'm using a phone Android or uh, an Apple or iPhone, it will, it will definitely ask, but by default it will, it will sense. So I'm using a desktop or a laptop. So I'll click on continue. So when you click on continue, it says you need Adobe Dict Editions which is required to download books. This is a free software, it's different from Adobe Reader. Adobe Reader, remember, reads PDF materials. But then you are also required to have a free Adobe ID, which is also required to transfer the book to another device. And it's not required to read books on this computer. So Adobe ID is not a reader, but it's registering the gadget you'll be using. If you are going to use a, a smartphone or a tablet, you'll be required to go to your uh, Google Play store and then you download Adobe Digital Editions. Now I'm using a public computer. I will not be able to download this because it has restrictions from our ICT office. So you, you, you are not allowed to install any software unless when you get uh, permission from them. So I'm not going to install. But when you are done with the installation, you go to done with this step. And then you are done with this step, you are going to the long length. They are giving you one day, seven days, 14 days, 21 days. So you select the number of days you are interested in, and then you click on download. So when you download the book, you will be able to read it through Adobe Dict Editions because you've already installed it. The computer has already been registered with Adobe ID. Now, there are scenarios that you want to share a book with a colleague on a flash. Yes, you will share a soft copy, but that colleague of yours will only be able to view it if he or she has also installed Adobe Dict Editions and then his or her gadget has been registered with an Adobe ID. And then it will count the number of days of you, the person, the supplier. Let me call you a supplier because it's you who borrowed the book, not him or her, for you are just sharing. 
So if the book is for 21 days and I'm sharing it with you past 10 days, it will not count 21 days. It will be under my account. So it will keep on counting the number of days which are remaining. And when they elapse, I will not be able to access it. Even you, the first person who is supplying it out to the rest, after the 21 days or 14 days or 7 days, it will just freeze. So you will have to come back to here and then download it again. Now, here is where the bookshelf will be of power. That instead of going back to search for the same book, I'll go to my bookshelf. So when I go to the bookshelf, I, I should recall the folder where I saved it. So I saved my book under business administration folder. So I'll go there and trace for it. And the, the book was on supply chain. So I'll look for it. Okay, it is here. Exploring supply chain management in creative industries. So I'll open it in a new tab as well. So that I'm able to download it again. So if I try to download it, I'm going to try it out. And you see what it means if I'm sharing it with other colleagues. Because it's already borrowed on my account. So I'll go to the download icon here. Download. And then they will show, they will skip all this info, device, installation, and so on. But if I need, I can click on them. But I'll skip that. And then I'll just go to download. So when I go to download, download your book, it is counting zero days and 23 hours. Because it's already borrowed. It's already on my account. So even if I share it with another colleague who doesn't have uh, an uh, ebook central account, still it will count the same. So even if I download it now, it will not increase on the number of hours or the days because it has already been borrowed within my account. So that's how Adobe uh, uh, eBook Central operates. Remember, we've navigated it through browsing, but we also went ahead to search, and we searched for supply chain and management. So that's how you can navigate through. But when this place, for example, 81,000, the, by default, there are 10 pages displayed, but you can say 100, so that displays to you a list of 100 items. So the list is quite long, then you navigate through. So it keeps on highlighting your keywords. So wherever it finds supply chain management, that's what it's going to pick out. So it will go on picking out exactly what you are interested in. So that's how we can navigate ebook central. Then we can go back to our main page here. And then we navigate through uh, the, the general databases. We shall not look at all of them, but we can look at a few. And I'll start with the email round. So when you come to Emerald, it's a general database. So Emerald, you take time also to browse through its content as we browsed with the ebook central, and then you can search. So for example, if I'm searching for business, uh, let me use supply chain as well. Uh, supply uh, chain management. is giving me 49,000 materials, but all these I don't have access to them. So on the right hand side of the page, there is what we call access. So you click in the box which says only content I have access to. So when you click in that, it has limited the numbers to 19,000 from 49,000. So after that, still the numbers are too high. But as I said earlier, you can be able to get materials for last week. So last week, they have 180 materials. And then if you want to download it as a PDF, you go to PDF. If you want to read it online, you click on HTML. Then you can also view the summary and the details of the article. So this is a research article because it has an abstract. Uh, it's abstract. It has a purpose. It has a design, stroke methodology. It has findings. It has research limitations. Actually, some of these articles can also guide you 
when you are working on your research. Then each article has what we call the DOI. Now the DOI is the digital object identifier. So it starts with the digit 10. So every online material peer reviewed and published when it's academic, it will have the DOI. So that DOI, you can use it to trace for the same item. So if I just copy it and paste it in just Google, I'll be able to get exactly the same item. So that's how it helps. So it will take me straight away to the database. I think you can see it is taking my, it's taking me straight away to the database where the book was, uh, was whether the article was picked from. So that's how uh, the DOI helps us. And then the article, they will show you the keywords of the article. Uh, and then, uh, then you, that, will, that will base, or you will base on that, to either download the PDF or not. So if that is the article I'm interested in, then I will download it. Uh, it will display, and then you will go ahead to download it. But as it displays, the DOI is included and all the information which is required for, uh, for referencing purposes. Then you go to the download icon and then download the material as well. Then under access, uh, access uh, still you can decide that I need from maybe 2020 to 2021. Instead of looking at uh, weekly, monthly, and so on, you can say 2021, and then I'll click on go. So when I click on go, you can see I have 3,000 results because I've limited. So because I've selected a year, that's why there's no option for weekly, monthly, and so on, because I've selected a year, and all these I have access to them. By default, it will display 10, I can decide to display 50 on a page. So that's how you can be able to navigate through the, the ProQuest, rather the Is it only me who is not getting the sound? I think we lost it. Or is it not speaking? Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm sorry, members. Uh, I, I unmuted myself because there was an urgent call. Somebody kept on calling since we started this session. So I decided to pick him. I'm sorry about that. So now when you look at this page, uh, after looking at the uh, email route, let's look at the volume is so low. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, let's look at J star. Away from your mic. So J star, uh, I'm saying let's look at J star now. J star is an archival database in the first place. So what you should understand that J star will not give you what was published last week or last month. For it being an archival database, but it's not disciplinary, it will give you materials which were published last year. So all materials which were published in 2021, most of them we shall get them in early January. So that's how JSTA works. It's, diff it's somehow different from Emerald. But for it also to navigate through, it's the same process. You can browse by subject, you can search. And then there's also advanced search, which we are going to look at in a different database so that you can know how you can use advanced search. So when you go by browsing, it has a number of subjects under different disciplines, which are organized alphabetically. For example, business and economics, uh, JSTA will have business separate, government studies, economics, finance, labor and employment relations, management and organizational behavior, marketing and advertising. So if I go to marketing and advertising, for example, I will display a number of journals and, the, and for it, it has 13 journals, which are also organized alphabetically. And then I can search within the marketing and advertising. 
So if I go into marketing and advertising and I search for maybe something outside that, I'll get zero results. So which means uh, it gives you options of searching within a subject and then also a general search box. So those options are there. So if I visit a journal, for example, a journal of decision is marketing, and I just click on it, it was from 1993 to 2017. Uh, it's still displaying. Okay. So it will summarize the years, the 2010s, 2000s, the 2090s. So I'll go to the 2010s. And the current, the current issue they have is for October to December. I hope this is English. It looks like French. October and December. So let me click on it and see. So that's the last uh, issue, the current issue. So when you go to it, they will display to you a number of articles. And then JSTAR will also group them. They are consummation responsibles, then they are marketing. This is French, my friend. Let me look for something different. This is French. We need something in English. Can it be translated? <laughs> <laughs> there must be sure. provision. I'm, I, I'm not so sure. Let me look for something which is in English. Oh, this is all French. I'm supposed to look for another journal, non decision marketing. Okay. I can't hear my journal. Journal for advertising. So let me look for journal for advertising. Now, journal for advertising, its publication is from 1970s up to 2010s. I look at 2010s, and a volume represents a year. So they are at volume 43 by the year 2013. So when I click on the current issue for volume 42, because normally issues are within volumes. So I'll go to the uh, volume uh, 43, issue number 4. Uh, it, it was from October to December. And then when you look at these articles, uh, you can read them online, you can download it in PDF, and then you can also cite. So for example, the first the first one is uh, exploring LA study emotion arises. Okay, it may not be of importance now, but let's use it for demonstration purposes. Then maybe I need to make this clear that JSTAR for it doesn't have what we call the digital object identifier. It gives a unique URL address per each article. For example, when you look at the article where I am, it's digit ends with the fold one, then the other, the next one is four two, the next one is four three. So the first digits are the same, but the last ones keep on changing. So for it, you'll be able to pick the URL address. So if I need the first one, for example, I'll click on download. So when you click on download, JSON in most cases wants to approve whether, whether you are not a robot, you are a human being. So it will display a page for you to approve. Approve your that you are a human being. So you accept and proceed to download. So after downloading that article, as it's loading, there's what we call site DC item. So when you click on site, as you see, you will use APA as our citation style. So you will copy, you will just copy APA, leave the rest, MLH cog and the rest, just copy that and paste it into your reference list. The only task you will have is to organize the references according to the surnames of the author. That's the only task you will have. Then our, uh, I think it's still loading, our article is still loading, it has not yet downloaded. So basically that's how you can get materials from JSTAR. So then when you go back to the main page, we have Taylor and Francis, uh, we have World Bank, you take time to look at World Bank, uh, but briefly, I need to look at EBSCOS because it has a unique feature. And then uh, Cambridge, Taylor and Francis, let me see what we can look at there. So uh, this is Cambridge. I don't waste a lot of time on Cambridge because time is almost... Can you please kindly move closer to the mic? Are you solo? 
Okay, I'm very close. Unless you try to increase your volume as well, because I'm I'm on my mic, actually. So now I'm saying that you, when you reach, when you go to Cambridge, for example, for it you can browse by subject as well. Uh, so for example, if you go by when you go by browsing, uh, it has an alphabet still. If I'm looking for, for business, I'll look through the list. There's no business, but there is economics. So if I click on economics, it will take me a number of journals for economics. And they are also outlined here. And then when you see show more, it means the list is long and it's organized alphabetically. There is a journal of econometrics theory. There is a journal of enterprise and society, finance history review. Uh, Journal of Agriculture and Applied Economics, and then Journal of Benefit Cost Analysis, and so on. So you'll be able to navigate through these journals the same way we've done it with the we've done it with JSTAR. So, for example, if I visit uh, one of the journals, for example, the Journal of uh, Journal of Management and Organization. So when I go to that specific journal. Uh, they will show me the current the current articles which have been published. Then if I want to look at all of them, I'll click on all issues. So when you click on all issues, it means it will display the different years we have access to. Now, where you see partial access, it means we don't have access to these materials. These are archival materials. So we have from 2000 to date. So rather from 2020. To date, that's what we have access to. And so far, their current volume is volume 27 and issue number 4, which was published in July. So we're expecting more other two uh, issues. So when you click on that issue, they'll display to you a number of articles. And then they'll show some editorial, research articles. And then, let me see, then there's no any other. And then you can see you have access to all of them. You want to download you just click on pdf but before you download they're giving you an abstract you can click on the abstract and then you read through if it makes sense for you then you can also export the citation so for it by default it will display apa and then you just copy that to the clipboard and then you paste it in your work you'll be able to uh, access uh, the materials as well so that's how you can uh, run through uh, Cambridge. You can also search, there's also provision, you can search within economics because remember I went into uh, economics uh, journals, so you can search within economics or you can use the main search box. So that is Cambridge. Uh, then I want us to look at Taylor and Francis briefly and with Taylor and Francis, uh, what I want to show you, the difference between basic search and advanced search. So by, by display, you can see advanced basic search box. It's displayed there. Then we also have advanced search. I'll open advanced search in a new tab. Then for it on the home page, you can just browse there. So you see on the home page, it has economics, finance, business, and industry. They just displayed there immediately. You don't need to navigate anymore. So we are going to use uh, supply chain. As, as our search term, supply chain management. And then we shall search. Then we shall go to advanced search. Now, advanced search, its uh, duty is to help you to limit the results so that there are not so many. And then it uses what we call the Boolean operators and the all not. So they give you some brief notes here. You take time to read through the notes on how it operates. Then it gives you an option of adding a search box. You can remove a search box, you can add. So for example, if I'm looking for supply chain, I'll use the same because it's the one we've applied the other side. Supply chain plus management then there is what we call 
uh, refining the search, you can say by title, by author, by keywords, by abstract, by affiliation. But when you limit it by title, it will mean that the articles it will display, they will only have supply chain management in title. So any material which has supply chain information but it's not displayed in the title, do not be displayed. So in most cases, we advise you to use anywhere. And then you come to publication dates. You can customize and see, say maybe last works for last month, last six months, last year. Or you can go to custom by year and say maybe from 2020 to 2021. Or you can say by month and you sign it last month. And then after that, you just search. So we are going to compare the results of one month and the other ones we looked for using the, the basic search. So here they are giving us 708 results, but it doesn't mean that we have access to them, all of them. That's why they have indicated a filter on the left-hand side where you can uh, select on ratio content I have full access to. So even if they are 708, let me see. So we have access to only 421 articles. So all these you can be able to download them. So you just click on the title, open it in a new tab, and then you'll be able to view a page which indicates uh, option for PDF. Uh, it indicates PDF or EPUB. EPUB is a book reader or uh, a reader for these online materials. So you just click on PDF. And normally when it displays, it will first display in EPUB. And then there is an option of selecting PDF. So when you come here on the page, uh, you select PDF. Because there are two options, EPUB by default, then you select PDF. So when you select PDF, you'll be able to get a PDF version of the article. So it's loading a PDF version of the article and it's here and then you just go and download the item so remember we were able to get found between one after refining our filtering our search let's look at this search you can see this search has 108,077 results so let's also try to filter and see but remember this one we didn't specify the duration of publication so still the numbers are too huge 53,000 coming from 11 journals. So that's then it will take you time to go here and select the publication year, the month, and so on. But when you use advanced search, straight away you are on point. So that's how Taylor and Francis works. Then uh, lastly, it's Ebus Cost. Now, Ebus Cost uh, it's a family of a number of databases. When you reach at it, on its home page uh, and you click on show all it has a number of databases but for your case as business students unless when your research is going to be under mass communication or journalism or it's going to be under education or it's going to be under religion for example we have atla series region collection it's for theology and divinity uh, communication and mass media complete it's for those who are under communication and journalism Eric is pure education. So academic search premier is the one you can use. So instead of running through all these databases, you've got to choose a database so that you select. So you only tick the databases, the ones you don't want, and leave only academic search premier. So when you leave only academic search premier, so you can search within academic search premier. And then if I use the same, uh, supply supply chain management for example and i search i'll be able to find out how many results i can be able to access so for it by default uh, on the left hand side of the page under refine your search it will tick to full text because i'm interested in full text i don't need materials which i can't access so wherever there is full text it will be in a pdf and then there are cases where you only want peer-reviewed, scholarly peer-reviewed journals. So out of the 2,506, I'll select scholarly peer-reviewed. So when I select scholarly peer-reviewed, the numbers have dropped to 1,004. 
still there are many are go down and limit by year of publication because all these are running from 1996 i'll say i need from 2020 i'm trying to uh uh remain with only a few items which i can run through so you can see now after selecting 2020 to 21 i have 261 results and already all of them i can be able to download pdf i can be able to download pdf then you just keep on running from one page to another so basically that's what i can present to you i want to thank you so much for your attention and uh, and even your involvement i want to wish you the best i may allow in two questions before you conclude yeah, this yeah, session yeah, uh, thank you thank you, thank you um, uh, stephanie uh, I was trying to register, but this is, it is indicating that there is system error. System error. Since our uh, first semester up to now, I am not able to register. I don't know, was it blocked or we are not allowed yet to enter or register? Uh, and also, I, I must, before you leave, I want to know whether you can be able to log in into Moodle and Alpha. Yes, I'm able to log into both Moodle and Alpha. Okay, what you will do, I'm going to share my contacts in the chat. You, you share you will share with me your details by email then i'll find okay. out okay okay contact. so let me share my emails and contact so you can we can always get in touch please okay thank you you're welcome Uh, Stefan, what happens after this is our our last semester, and uh, we yes, shall please. be having we shall be having research going on. Uh, will we be having access to this online uh, online li library even uh, up to the time we finalize with our research? Yes, you will. You'll be able. Thank you. You'll be able, please. And if you still need our assistance, we are available. Okay, sir. We are available until when you take your tra your, your your transcript and certificate from UCU. So those are my contacts, and then I'm going to share a recording. I think I'll share it with the Docas. So Docas will be in position to share it with all of you. And in case you can't call, you can use the WhatsApp or you can use the emails, the, the one for the institution, the institution email and my Gmail. So I'll be in position to attend to you. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, I understand you may not have questions now because you need to practice. And for those who have created accounts, I'm going to approve them tonight so that you can be able to access the, uh, the library. And if you have any challenge with creating an account, please let me know, uh, and then we can forge our way forward. So don't just don't just sit back. Uh, if you have any challenge, and if you are facing a challenge, there are some materials you are trying to access and you have no access to them. Still, let let me know as well. I can help you to get those uh, materials which you are unable to get from our databases. So if there are no uh, more questions, I think you've picked my contacts. Uh, and then oh, I want to thank you again. Thank you once again for your attention and taking this time. I understand you have classes at five. I'm already now encroaching into the lecturer's time. But I want to say bye-bye uh, to you. And then I'll share the recording with Docas tomorrow. And then she'll be in position to share it with you. Thank you.